Hello, my dear students. Um, this is the last recording for Shelley's poem, Or to the West Wind. And in this recording, I will explain Canto, four, or canto 5. Sorry. In the fifth canto, the poet expresses a hope that the wind will carry his ideas and bring about a socio-political change. In the first stanza of this canto, Make me thy lyre, even as the forest is. What if my leaves are falling like its own? The tumult, the tumult of thy mighty harmonies. Once again, the poet wants to be controlled by the wind, to be at the mercy of the wind. He asks the wind to transform him into a lyre of or, or a harp, a musical instrument that is played by the wind. He even wants to be like the dead leaves which falls to the ground when the wind blows. In stanza two of this cantos, will take from both a deep autumnal tone, sweet though in sadness, be thou, spirit fierce, my spirit, be thou me, imputous one. The speaker, or the poet, ask the wind to come into him and bring him back to life. This is a clear gesture that for the poet, the wind is a spiritual power or God. This goes with the Christian belief that to have a new life, one must receive the Holy Spirit into his or her bodily being. This is why the poet wants to receive the Holy Spirit of the wind into his body to enliven him. He, reali he realized that for this enlivening or resurrection to happen, his old self would be swept away. That is why he described this as a sweet thrill in sadness. But he asked the spirit of the wind to be his own spirit and to be one with him. In stanzas three and four of Canto Five, drive my, bed th my dead thought over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth, and by incantation of this verse, the incantation of this verse, scatter as a form of an unextinguished her hearth, ashes and sparks, my, th my words among mankind be through my lips, to unawakened earth. In stanza three, canto five, not only the poet wants the wind to give life to his body, but also to his mind or thoughts as well. He asks the wind to drive his dead thoughts over the universe so that even as he's, he dies, others might take his thoughts and his ideas, ideology meaning, and give them a new birth. He thinks that perhaps this renewal or rebirth of thoughts might happen by means of his verse. This is why he asked the wind to scatter his verse over the world. In stanza 4, canto 5, the poet asks the wind to scatter his thoughts as he is, meaning the wind, scatters the ashes and sparks that his words might inflame a fire among manhood and maybe awaken this sleeping earth. In Canto 5, stanza 5, the trumpet of prophecy, O wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? The last two lines of this poem give some hope that if winter comes, spring is not far behind. It will come soon. Here winter is a symbol of death and decay. It stands for, the, for England, hoped by the darkness and coldness of greed, 
tyranny and corruption. Springs, on the other hand, stands for rebirth of England when it will get rid of those or these social, social diseases by the power of the wind. The wind here can be stand for the revolutionary radical thoughts that might lead to the aspiring profound change. The poet has made some spiritual and biblical references throughout the poem. He personifies the wind as a spiritual power or a god. He also ends up the poem by saying the trumpet of prophecy. He is clearly referring here to the end of the world as the Bible, describe, Bible describes it. When the trumpet of prophecy is blown, Christ is believed to return to earth to judge the inhabitants. The poet asks the wind to blow that trumpet. The trumpet of prophecy could also be the poet's suggesting the end of his life. He wants the wind to blow his trumpet, and the last two lines of the poem Shelley makes it obvious why he has appealed to the wind to take him away in death. He hopes that he might leave behind his dying body and enter into, uh, enter into a new life after death. Thank you.